That I would love to introduce Christine Hanna, who's our special guest today. Um, it, it's got everything that I wanted in a Right, folks who are joining, hello and welcome. We're starting a little early because I miss everybody. Because <laughs> I usually start right on time, but I was so anxious because I haven't seen everybody in such a long time and maybe there are new people out there. So definitely uh, chat box is open, say hello. If you are new to my channel, to my live streams, also please say hello and tell me where you're joining from. Um, and I like to see hellos from my regulars as well. So please use the chat box as folks are joining on this very special day. Mary, you are first for a hello. Hello, Mary. Good to see you. Hey, Troy in Oklahoma, Waynesboro, Virginia, Stephanie, Lydia, Sharon. Hey, guys. Lydia from New York. Yay. Awesome. Philly's in the house. Evelyn, my favorite people are all joining. I love it. Allegra, good to see you. Great to see you. Hi. Hello, Florida. Great. Hello, everyone. If you're just joining, definitely say hello in the chat box. It will be open. Marcella, good to see you in Manalapin. Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. Good to see you, Gina. Ohio, Iowa. Marina, good to see you. Hello, Plymouth, Michigan. All right. Tell me also in the chat box if you are new to my channel or, um, or if you're new to the channel. I mean, is this a brand new thing for you. All right, Kate, good to hear that. Brand new, welcome, welcome. Staten Island is in the house. One of the five boroughs that I'm from. Well, now I can't even keep up. Idaho, Pamela, Kathy, Cincinnati, new to the channel. Carrie is new and new to minis. Wow, well, welcome to the world of minis and welcome to your new obsession. <laughs> Ocala, Suzanne is brand new, awesome. Hi, Lisa, up in Maine, one of my favorite places in the world to visit in the summer. Brentwood, Nashville, Tennessee. Cheryl is also new. Awesome. Salem, Oregon. Kara, Leslie. Oh my God, you guys are so terrific. Thank you so much. Keep populating that chat box because I love to find out who is joining and where you're joining from and what is your involvement in the mini world? Are you new to miniatures? Are you new to my channel? Um, great to see everybody. Thank you for joining. We're just um, after the four o'clock hour and I do like to start on time. So continue to populate that chat box as I go through some housekeeping before we um, bring up our special guest. So thank you very much for joining this Meet the Miniaturist. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining. Um, if you're here for the first time, I am Darren. I call myself an unapologetic miniaturist because I don't like to tell people what it is I love anymore. I'm over it. I do what I do because I love it and that's all. So I call myself unapologetic, but I do promote miniatures every chance I can get. Um, and this is one of those opportunities. So I'm really glad to be able to do this. I'm glad to be able to promote miniatures, but I also sell miniatures. Um, in fact, I just finished up an estate sale. It was a collection of this wonderful couple out of Guilford, Connecticut, Tom and Lois, the Sautels. You can learn more about the Sautels um, in the chat box. And please shout out and thank Donald Morcone, who is my friend, who isn't doing the background um, technology for us today. Thank you, Donald. He's gonna pop in, populate the chat box so you can um, click on these links if they are uh, interesting to you. So check out um, information on the Sawtells and this estate sale, which happened already, but if you wanna learn about the Sawtells, you know, it's, it's a really lovely story. And most of my estate sales um, have a story around the, the wonderful collectors who uh, assemble these beautiful collections. And I love to tell their stories. I mean, I love to sell and I love miniatures, but really what I love to do is tell the wonderful stories behind these makers, collectors, artists who, you know, put this collection together. So Sawtells are wonderful people, go read about it. I do have another estate sale coming up later this month. Um, you can follow, uh, this one will be on my eBay selling site. So um, we're gonna pop out, pop in my, the eBay link. You should go and follow and favor that account so you'll know where to go when the sale does begin. But 
best opportunity to know what's going on, when, where, and how, and first is my email, my email blasts. And we're going to pop that in the chat, which is really just go in on my website. It, a pop-up will happen and you can, you can join up there, but we're going to put a link to all of my, um, my, uh, con connections in the, in the chat box. Now, hold the date, November 12th. If you've got a collection that you're looking to sell and you want information on how to best do that. Uh, I have a very popular selling your door door collection webinar that I do. I'm doing it on November 12th. I'm going to pop in an early registration link if you want to like secure a space. I have more than enough space for everybody, but we're going to pop the link in there if you want to go there and sign up and register. Um, two more things. Uh, I have a patrons club. So if you want to um, support my channel and support my efforts in all that I do around this wonderful world of miniatures. I have a patrons club and that gives access to um, exclusive content, exclusive uh, live streams and events. So check that out. I'll put a link, Donald will put a link in there so that you can go and see and read a little bit more about what the patrons club is all about. Finally, I don't know if you guys were at the Guild Show. It was an amazing event. It was great to be back into those rooms and to see the collectors and the energy behind miniatures and the artisans. And um, I had an amazing time. I got a really great haul. Um, and I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna put a link in there. I did a YouTube video on my haul. Um, and so check that out so you can get to see some of the things that I picked up at the show and the artists that created some of those pieces. It was really a great event. Um, so go check that out on my YouTube channel. Um, but I do want to thank miniatures.com because they are sponsoring this live stream today. Um, if you don't know about miniatures.com, uh, they are a family owned company. They've been around for more than 40 years and they've really been fueling um, the uh, the small scale hobby world all these years providing tools materials uh, supplies and I think most importantly inspiration with a whole bunch of things that they do including sponsoring this including uh, the contests that they run so go and check that out so with that I would love to introduce Christine Hanna who's our special guest today and we're going to talk all about Christine and her involvement with miniatures.com and the wonderful piece that's behind her um so with that thank you Christine for being here it's so good to see you good to have you um let let's chat let's get to the beginning so how where did all this start for you because there's a story here um so w when did the miniatures bug hit you Ooh, um, I went to university for photography and I live about an hour outside of the downtown and where my school was. So I needed to take photographs and I couldn't find anywhere I wanted to photograph. So I decided to make little dioramas and photograph them. And I did some solo shows, some group shows, um, just mainly focusing on photography. And then after that, I graduated and I went right into the hobby side and I started a blog in 2013 and we're here today with like a custom full out dollhouse from scratch. So yeah, little foam board dioramas to this has been amazing. Yeah. So, so did you grow up with a dollhouse? Like where did that, where did it really start for you? The, uh, the interest? I think. I might have had a dollhouse and I'm really disappointed oh, yeah. that we don't know where it is, but I always loved, I, I used to shoot little home videos with my cousins. Yeah. And then when I got to miniatures and I started photographing them, I'm like, oh, this is like, again, more like storytelling. And um, I mean, I went for fine arts at university, so I, I like to be artistic and that's what, that's I'm not a painter, but this kind of miniatures bring together all your artistic talents, there's interior design, there's crafting, there's design. Um, and I, I, it's something that I really enjoy. Yeah. Well, so no, that, that makes total sense. You have a fine art background in terms of yeah. your education, your interest in photography, and absolutely all those pieces come together to bring you where you are today. But in terms of your, your social media success, um, a lot of it's centered around your photography. Is that right? That's really what your focus was? I think, yeah, especially when I started a blog, like I loved getting the windows with the light coming in. Yeah. I was super realist. I wanted it to look yeah. very illusion-like. That mm -hmm. was how I did miniatures up until about a year or two ago when I really just, when I did more like 
social media because people wouldn't know if there wasn't a hand in it that it wasn't mini, right? Completely right. changed how I do miniatures. Definitely influenced this house and a lot of my room boxes. I started going taller ceilings because you're shooting vertical. Right. And, um, but that to me is part of what I love about the miniatures, like making making it so that I can share it with others. And basically the blog and social media are how I get to do that. Cause there's not really a lot of people here, except there's, I've met one miniaturist this year who lives with, near me, but otherwise, you know, right? online friends. <laughs> right, so we actually really didn't say, where are you from? You're from Canada, correct? You're up in Canada? Yeah. I'm in the capital, yeah, I'm in Ottawa. Yeah, so so most of this time you're creating the blog, you're doing the photography, you're doing these posts that are clearly wowing and thrilling folks because you have a great growing, a great following and it continues to grow and I follow you and I just love all of your posts. So at some point you transition to actually making miniatures for people, is that right? Like people yeah. started wanting your stuff, is that sort of how that happened? I like, I guess with the blog I was doing it for myself just for yeah. fun and then I would start designing I I I didn't find what I wanted I wanted modern miniatures and this was back in like 2013 and yeah there were some options but not a lot yeah. so yeah. I decided I need to figure out a way to make these things happen so yeah. I learned 3d printing by myself and I self-taught myself uh laser cutting yeah. and I went to the local library and then I ended up getting the machines at home. And right. I just decided that if I was gonna make it for me, I could offer it to others. And that's how my Shapeways shop with my faucets and things like that came about. Right. And um, I guess really it was all born out of the fact that I didn't see a lot of what I wanted on the market. Now that's changing now, but yeah. at the time, I just didn't see what I wanted. So I built a lot of custom, I kit bashed and built a lot of custom things. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, there's tons of questions that are coming up. Let me take a second. Um, we, you know, folks, definitely populate the quest, the chat box with your questions and we'll try to grab as many as we can. Um, I see so many people, it's awesome. Oh, uh, it is, it is great. It is terrific. Um, we do have, we have a friend here from, from Canada saying hello. Yeah, someone else in um, Ottawa. You have to, you have to let me know, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. So yeah. So guys, if you have questions, put it in the chat box. So, so all I, I do have one question because I really do feel like it's folks like you that are changing the perception of dollhouse and the dollhouse world with sort of the, your modern approach. It's, it's, um, uh, it's got a lot of innovation to it. It's got a lot of wow. Um, so you're really pushing the envelope on what people see in this world and really inspiring folks. So, you know, and, and that beautiful piece behind you, which is the Brentwood guys, which was your creation and a manufacturing partnership with miniatures.com. And I do need to make one thing before we move on, which is guys, um, miniatures.com, has created a very special promotion just for the viewers today. I failed to mention it when we first started, so let me take a second to do that. It is a very special promotion with 25% off on miniatures.com, special code. So from the second through the ninth, we're gonna pop that in the, in the box. Donald just did that, thank you. Using the MTM 1022 code and get 25% off your order. So go ahead and use that. Thank you miniatures.com for supplying that to the viewers today. So and maybe even buy a Brentwood when we're getting done with this. <laughs> All right, so wait. Okay, so partnership with miniatures.com to create really what, what I believe is innovation in the dollhouse marketplace, inspiration for the hobbyists coming into this world, because not everybody wants the Victorian anymore, although that's a whole nother question about whether that's coming back, but that's a whole different live stream. <laughs> and it might be another 10 years before that happens, but um, so tell us, about the Brentwood. Tell us about what was the inspiration for that specific design and bringing that to folks. Um, well, I've done quite a few doll. I've done quite a few dollhouses, quite a few kit bashes because uh -huh. I never really found kind of what I was looking for. And I've done. I just want to say I've actually done seven collaborations with Miniatures.com. Oh, really? I love them. They're yeah. awesome to work with, super friendly. And I mean, they've been so encouraging the whole way with this. But when they reached out to me, like it was so it was it was perfect because we've worked together so much. And yeah. 
I've always enjoyed it and they've always like seen my vision. So when we first talked about doing a dollhouse, I had always wanted to do an all white brick, oh. this style of house. And it just, it never happened. I was gonna kid bash a Victoria farmhouse and it wasn't quite working for me. Yeah. So when this started, I decided, okay, I'm really gonna go from well, almost scratch. I did have a house kind of like this that I started. If you've been to my blog, you've uh -huh. seen it. It's a gigantic house. It's like <laughs> double this. And I had to put it away because it wasn't it wasn't working out. Yeah. So this is like the little sister and it's perfect. Um, it, It's got everything that I wanted in a house. This is like the dream Christine Hanna house. Yeah. But, eight plus rooms. It's got all the cute archways. It's got wide stairs, big rooms, because for me, I like space. Like every single kit or dollhouse, I yeah. expand it. Is that, yeah. you know, I, I like the space. Yeah, so yeah. I brought up a video that um, takes us through sort of the process. Talk a little bit about the process of coming up with the design, all the work that goes into putting this together. We're seeing some of the, the the images now. Like, is that foam core you use to sort of, this, how did that work? This takes me right back. I remember in the end of December, like I think it was right after Christmas, I went out and got a ton of foam board from the craft store. Yeah. And I built the mock-up because it's one thing to see it digitally, but it's yeah. another thing to like build it. So yeah. I, did, I did a full mock-up and then, I, I mean, this is when the pieces came. So miniatures.com got it manufactured. Um, oh, oh, so wait, so they show, I want to slow it down. I want to, I want to slow it down. So this is, this is actually after it's built. It's actually designed at this point. Yeah. Right? So, this, so this, this is when I actually got, this is a prototype. Well, that's the, the kit there. Right. Um, but we did, I have, I, I think I had one other prototype come. I, it was really, we really focused on making it the customer like experience really enjoyable and really good because it's one thing for me to design a dollhouse for myself, but it's another thing to make a kit because, you know, yeah. it's just, it's completely different. And yeah. we want to make it really smooth for people to put it together. So like there's grooves and everything. So it just slots together super yeah. easy. Um, yeah. But that took a while to figure out for sure. Yeah, that was gonna be one of my questions, some of the challenges, because it's one thing to design for yourself the way you want it, one shot deal, but yeah. now you're designing, you need to make people happy with the design, but then you also have to make them happy in the in the, in the the experience of putting that together. So how did that sort of change your thinking? Or maybe you had some happy surprises out of that, like, oh, this groove needs to go here, that means I get a bigger wall. I don't know, making it's, that up. But, you know, yeah. it's just, it's completely different and yeah. we wanted to make it really smooth for people to put it together. So like there's grooves and everything. So it just slots together super yeah. easy. Um, yeah. But that took a while to figure out for sure. Yeah, that was gonna be one of my questions, some of the challenges, cause it's one thing to design for yourself the way you want it, one shot deal, but yeah. now you're designing, you need to make people happy with the design, but then you also have to make them happy in the in the, in the the experience of putting that together. So how did that sort of change your thinking? Or maybe you had some happy surprises out of that. Like, oh, this groove needs to go here. That means I get a bigger wall. I don't know, making that up, but like. Honestly, like one of the biggest things was trying to go from like, I don't know, like making design choices at first, like would everybody like this? Like it's not just for you, you know what I mean? Not gonna say I was a little bit paralyzed by that a, a bit at the yeah. beginning, but um, I knew the things that I really wanted in a house. And so I just put all of that into there and I really hope that, you know, I, from what I've heard, everyone's really like loving those parts of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it was like, it was deciding little things like the ceiling started out nine inch uh -huh. and we moved them up to 10 inch yeah awesome because i know like the townhouse that miniatures.com sells by adam they have it has really high ceilings and it's just so much easier again to film or get your hands in there right. um so that was that was something that we changed and that was something that i had to you know play around with the foam board model yeah um, so let's talk about all the custom features here because you yeah. designed all of the, the the windows the doors things like that correct those are all can't find anywhere kind of thing right yeah um it's crazy because i i really wanted a double front door i'm always like kit bash two doors together i'm like we need 
<laughs> we need a double door with windows because for wreaths, right? Like I can't yeah. wait to put wreaths on this gorgeous double door. Yeah. I know front porches, when I did a poll on Instagram, it was really hard because I didn't share a lot of the design process with my followers. So it was uh -huh. really tough, but I did know that everybody really likes front porches. So we definitely still have a front porch, even though there's the cute little it's portico. It's like a portico, right? Yeah. I love it. And then, so, it gives you such great depth and dimension. I love that. And I made mine removable. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> um, so the house does have that option. Um, because, well, and I like to film. So it's, you can get closer to the uh, to the door. But the windows, these are, this is my style of windows. I always yeah. make windows like this for all my room boxes. Um, so much natural light. Yeah. And, and should I spin it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, because we're going to get to talk about the interior as well. Yeah, because there's, there's some, my favorite features, right? Like, oh, that's awesome. The interior. All right, let's show, we're going to show some of the, the behind. Oh, yeah, the, well, maybe the, I should show the brick. <laughs> the in, the um, interior as well. So that's the brick there. So those are all cork bricks. And surprisingly, super easy. Miniatures.com does sell the cork sheets. It's really uh -huh. affordable. Yeah. Really um, lightweight. And um, yeah, I did the entire interior. Didn't take, it, it was super easy. Highly recommend. Yeah, well, that was actually one of the questions was um, about the brick. Does it come with the kit? So we've answered that. So you do have to order the brick separately. But the finish on the house that you're sharing behind you, what is yeah. the finish on that? So so this is the cork brick. Like oh, it I, is cork bricked. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so one sheet, I think, is like eleven ninety nine. I think, okay. you do the yep. entire front. Like, the entire front and um you don't have to space it because there's like no grout line so it looks a little bit rustic and then on the uh the paint is alabaster by sharon williams and okay. it's a uh, matte finish the Beautiful. matte finish really made a big difference uh, yeah. so i did it everywhere it's beautiful it's hard to see the texture but i can tell there's texture there yeah yeah so now tell us about the interior, because I understand there's interior work, obviously, that you did for your house, but there's interior pieces that are going to be made available. Yes. Let's talk, let's talk about that. Yes. Okay. So, like, I'm really <laughs> pleased. I do get asked, like, what comes with the kit. Yeah. You do get the beautiful arches. You do get the awesome railings and the stairs, which, like I said, are wide. Um, and you get the closet. I mean, I wanted a closet in a dollhouse, right? Like, wait, we need to talk about that that closet because I think that's such serious innovation. Wait, is that a, is that a washer and dryer in there? Dryer up there, yeah. Get out. Yeah, yeah. And so it could be a clothing closet, but I know not a lot of miniatures have clothing because it's not. It's it's people are getting more of it, but there's not like a lot, a lot. So. It definitely works really cute as a laundry closet. That's what I did. Um, you. <laughs> and then we'll bring up the end, which is some of your awesome social media posts on behind oh, it. Yeah. Thanks. It looks like it's a little bit, it's a little bit washed out there, but. No, but we could totally see it's awesome. Okay, good. I, I, I do want to talk about some of the things you just brought up in terms of how folks are, you know, using dollhouse, playing quote unquote, I hate that word, but. What does it give me about, you know, the fact that, you know, people are looking for things like a closet. People are looking for things like interesting things like a washroom. I mean, ha like like when, when I was growing up, that is not, that was not the dollhouse we had. There were maybe four rooms. And I think that's probably part of it. It is a bigger house and you're using those spaces very <laughs> differently. Is there a bathroom there? I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. Tell me about your thinking behind offering sort of this other stuff. So I really wanted a house with everything. I, I don't yeah. know, is it just me? Like people can say in the comments, you know, like I wanted, I wanted one, it's like the house with it all, right? Like you could fit everything. Um, and I love making bathrooms. So that's why there's two. I like designing the pieces for it. And we do, we have brand new pieces for this uh, house. We design vanities specifically for the Brentwood. But no, I really wanted a closet. I really wanted modern railings. We have the gorgeous arches because people want um, open concept dollhouses. And it's a little bit tricky to do open concept because you kind of do need 
the support. So I was really hoping that the arches still kind of opened up the space. Yeah. And it's a different feature. It's a little bit, you know, that's not something you see very often. And um, like you mentioned before, the doors, we've made custom doors for this house. You can see their two panel. Ah, um, oh, even the not, interior doors are custom. Yeah. So it's exploding. You know, <laughs> wow. I love them. I love them. And they're in, on the closet too. So um, this room has, I did it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven rooms. So is the closet count as an eight? So it's, you could, but I'm sure you could divide it up in more. I just like really big rooms, right? So, yeah. Um, you know, the proportions are really nice and the house does not seem too overwhelmingly big. Oh, what, what, I mean, do you know what I mean? Cause you got, uh, you know, got three stories, but you're using the third floor really, really well. And then you got the height, but I mean, it doesn't feel like not achievable to have and find space for, do you know yeah. what I mean? I think like the, um, like you can see the sofas there, like they're, they're on the small side, but they still work. Now this is cause I wanted a gourmet big kitchen. That's going to happen a little bit later. But um, I've seen some other people, uh, okay, craziest thing. I saw someone else working on this kit. Um, uh, she's on Instagram, MCS Mini. Oh. I did a double take because it's the first time, it just felt so unreal because she was building the kit. First time I've seen it, it was, yeah. it was crazy. But I think she swapped the layout. I can't wait to see those. Oh, interesting. Um, You're seeing the work come to life. Oh my gosh. I yeah. even doing this today, like it just, it's finally feeling yeah well it's quite a compliment it's quite an accomplishment for sure just to be involved from the from the grant from the beginning to design it all the way to bringing it to market it's huge it's huge so congratulations but I, but i think the most important thing you're doing is you're inspiring people to get interested if they're not in this category or if they are already starting a new project you know what i mean doing something different and new um all right let's take a question what did you do for electric lighting sharon wants to know is there lighting in there i can't really tell there is lighting i'm lighting so is it battery or electric um i like round wiring yeah i don't know i never did the tape i mean i never did the tape wiring so uh -huh. um it's round wired. Uh, I the floors are not glued to the. Um, they're glued to Bristol board. So I put all my round wires underneath, um, and then ran them up actually behind the laundry closet. Okay. Lights on. Uh, you know, I mean, I think people get all freaked out about lighting, and it's really not as bad. It, the, yeah. the, the most important thing about lighting is just have a plan. That's all. Just have a plan. That's what most people don't do when they get involved. Okay, so that is totally lit. You're round wire, and that's, you know, I love it. That's I think my I favorite thing is, like, I, this, this chandelier here. This, this like, it's so pretty. So you designed that, too? No, I didn't design that, but it's, oh, okay. it's, just, it's from miniatures.com. I don't know. Oh, okay. I just love it in this house. It's so, yeah, it's, it's so pretty. It's so, exactly can you just repeat what you said about the flooring? Is it, it's glued to something else? and then pick, place down. I did a Bristol board kind of template. So I drew out all the floors, like marked it out and then cut it out of Bristol board. And then I actually used flooring sheets that were a peel and stick and I put that on the Bristol board. So- What's Bristol board? I don't know what that is, do I? Well, it's like a thick like, card stock. Is that a Canadian? Oh, it's like a mat board. What? <laughs> I don't know. Is that, is that a Canadian? Do people tell me? Um, I don't know. It's like, it's board. A thick, it's a, it's a poster board. Maybe that's it. Poster, poster board. Poster board? Like board. really just thick cardstock, but yes, thicker. That's it. Yeah. But not map board. Oh, so, um, so uh, Liang is saying, yes, it's poster board. So yeah, okay, Bristol board is poster board. I guess maybe it's a country thing, different. <laughs> um, Bristol board floors, okay. And and the Bristol board sl slides under the trim is one of the questions from Pam. And then you did the, you did, you did baseboard? So I did, I did flooring first, I put down the floor and then I put the baseboard on top. So if I do ever want to get to the wiring, I do have to like yank off the baseboards and then I can lift up, but it's a lot easier than if I just applied all the flooring sheets directly yeah. onto the, onto the actual floor. I could have done it on this one, but, and it was just easier to have it on my table and lay the, um, lay the floorboards on it. So. Right, right. 
That's crazy. All right, I, I want to go back to um, the interior and some of the pieces that you're making for, because right now the the um, the Brentwood is available for folks to buy, but talk about some of the pieces inside that either are available now or will be. Talk about that. So this is, um, I designed this kit, this bed for the, for the top floor, the main bedroom. Love it. it. Um, this bed as a kit is available now. So we got custom bedding, a <gasps> Paramore bedding. Oh, um, it's a dress made. bed? You could buy, you buy it as a dress bed? You buy, no. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not that, it's really not that, it's really not that hard to put together. So okay. we came up with <laughs> custom bedding. We worked with Carol Moore from Designing Ways and she, oh. we worked with her to design this really beautiful custom bedding. There's a blue one and a beige one. And I knew right away, I wanted this style bed for the Brentwood and this kind of bedding. And like, oh. it just came together beautifully. So yeah. the bedding is being sold right now. And the um, and the uh, bed, the, it comes as a whole bedroom set. So you get the nightstands and the bench. I don't know if I can um there's like a little bench and actually I really hope to this week wrap some uh do like a nice like cover on the top yeah uh, and I upholstered this with some fabric it's, it's not that hard to do so that's one of the set and it just it fits so nicely in between the windows up there and it's a transitional style and really yeah. that was my inspiration for this house I wanted a yeah. Southern trans transitional style, like Studio McGee, and oh. uh, I think like Amber Interiors, things like that. That's that's something that I've always loved. Um, so we did those, and then we also did the vanities. And let oh. me take it up, up <laughs> here because I really wanted modern uh, modern shaker. Can you see it there? It's a little hard to see. Oh no. But what are we seeing? What are we looking at? Can you pull you the piece out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, yeah, know. let's see it that way. Oh, I love it. And and I want to say something about how, the importance of or how great it is that you design the furniture that's going in the house that you designed because not always, you know, we're talking about miniatures. So every millimeter counts. So sizing is so important. So the fact that you created that bed for that space means that it is appropriate for that space. Just like when you go and shop, I don't know, one furniture company versus another, it, it's yeah. gonna change. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a great advantage when you're trying to put a house together and for everything to sort of look right and feel right. Um, Allegra wants to know if the vanity opens. Does it open? Does the door open? It's not, it's not, it's non-opening. It's um, a non-opening. All right, it, it is beautifully designed. I love the style. The 3D printed sink, which is super oh. nice. It's got a resin finish, so super easy to make like porcelain if you're gonna spray it. Um, uh, and then- The come in that color? Yeah, or... it's, a, it's a kit. It's oh, a kit. it's a kit. Oh, it's okay. Kit. So I designed kit because I was going to make like, when I was going to do the house, I was going to make all this stuff for myself. And I was like, well, why don't we make it available? And I asked yeah. and they were like, yeah, well, let's, let's do it. So, um, these are things that I wanted for my Brentwood and they fit yeah. so well. Um, and there was nothing, nothing like it. And, and yeah. knobs. And so these are both from miniatures.com too. So it's super Love easy it. to- Love it. Well, we just got Heather from Managers.com to post in the link there. If you're looking, if you're looking for um, some of Christine's furniture, um, it's it's in there, so you can go check it out. So, what are the other pieces? You've got bathroom fixtures, you have beds. Um, we did have a question about whether the bedding was available. But the bedding is the whole, all the bedding and the bed is available. Yeah, so they come to awesome. there's the there's the blue set and then there's the beige set just for bedding. Comes with three accent pillows, uh, the duvet, and then. Uh, two two regular size pillow i mean it's beautiful it's, it's yeah. just beautiful and then um we bedding and then we also did these like children's beds oh really yeah so oh. this is again so it comes with the mattress i the, both sets come with the mattress and then it's got this like cute little that's adorable like, bubble design because they had these mattresses and i was like well this would be so nice as a little uh yeah. Envisioned it as a twin 
as a yeah person. and again i just go back to the fact that you know there's you, you usually sometimes when you order stuff and you don't know the sizing and it's come you get disappointed but you you you, you will not get disappointed because this was made for this house <laughs> some, some beds like some children's beds are just so they're crazy so small, the right? they're crazy yes. but that you know that hard work is already done for you that's what i love about this it's just great awesome awesome the house is beautiful the interior is beautiful the pieces are lovely it's such a fresh approach to miniatures and i just love it and i want to show i don't want to um i want to make sure we show some of how you bring this this work to life on your social media so let me go back and bring up that video so that people can see what I'm talking about because I don't so want to miss it, to make you know, what's that I'm so looking forward that's the part I can't wait now that the house is almost completed like that's going to be the best part making all the little stories in it yeah I mean and that's also that's the fun part can, wait, yeah. hold on. let me make sure I okay let's bring it up so we're bringing the house to life there it is I love it and I just oh Hold on. Yeah. So this yeah. is before the interior was done. And uh, there's the foam board. See, I really mocked it all oh, up. The foam board. Um, right. This is just when the interior was done. There's oh. me. <laughs> I love the, the metal roof, the doors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love construction minis. They're like, they're my favorite. So I had to do a good construction scene wheel. There you could see a close up of that brick. Oh my yeah. God. We did a little garden. I'm hoping to expand the landscaping today. I went for like more of a fall vibe, but I love garden, mini gardens. Yes. Oh, and I love the wood finish on those doors. Yay! I was so excited <laughs> in that moment. Okay, like I finally finished. <laughs> like I finally did the post. <laughs> I see it. And you know what? You could just tell how much work went into this. You must just feel so relieved. Like this is done. <laughs> Like the interior has been such a rush, but I mean, like I said, it's only now feeling real and seeing yeah. someone else making that kit this week, just, yeah. it was amazing. It, it finally felt like it was coming together. Yeah. Well, we did get a good question from Mary wanting to know what's next. Is there a bucket list house that's on your, like in your mind? Are you, do, does your mind go to like, do, like, like are there a million houses that you want to do? Like, what is, like, talk about what might be next for you. I think I, like, start to get an idea for a house. Like, I've been marinating on this style of house, this layout for a few years. And now that I have done this house, and it is on the larger side, I would like to do, uh, like, a contemporary Ooh. home that you'd see in a subdivision, I guess, near me. Like, two yeah. stories, maybe, with, um, you know, with the pitched roof. So, yeah. so contemporary, a little bit traditional, but I'm definitely thinking like a two story smaller house than this one. It's a little yeah. bit less rooms, but um, yeah, and maybe some cool like design layout. That's that's what I would love to do next. Yeah. Yeah. I got well, the, you, know, I got you can always, you know, always have add ons later on if people want to make it bigger. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, if you want me, the next okay? What's that? <laughs> that's me. That's I'm you. always making it bigger. I really struggle with the small little little houses, which is why I like this one. But you can always add on. Yeah. So how, we had another really good question was, what, how long does this process take? Let's like, let, you had the Brentwood in your head it's been from great. start to finish, from idea to delivery. So I think it definitely helped that I, like I said, I've been like thinking about this house for a while. Um, like a couple years and like to pulling different elements like the arches and some of the layout in other houses. But um, I started this end of December. I designed it all of January, like just coming up with the overall floor plan. And then I think it was, we did some like edits. I did some edits in um, February cause I designed it on 3D software. March yeah. was off and then April, May and June was just all out like designing yeah. for the cnc i got it in june i think i got a prototype and then we did some edits and then i got i think i actually started doing the kit june to july or something yeah. i did the exterior in three weeks right. and then um i did some other work designed a lot of these pieces that took a little while i and then uh 
yeah did the interior now so I mean it's been under a year for sure it's it's the fastest I've ever done a dollhouse that right wow <laughs> and this is all mostly made in the U.S. for 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 the most part the kit is manufactured in the U.S. which yeah. is always yeah. good to know yeah um, this, this kit all the um and all the furniture that we the laser cut uh, furniture that we made it's all made in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Um, another couple of, of questions let's take. Um, Jean wants to know, do the women, do, do the windows come painted? No. So they got to paint that. And the doors- I know, the I know, I know. Listen, if you don't paint them white, it won't be so bad. If you, if anything laser cut, if you paint white, it takes a long time. But I will say having laser cut windows, you really, you really get like these big, open windows that you may not have gotten before with your other dollhouse kits. I, to me, I was really excited. I do think they offer something really different. And there's something that I've always used in my room boxes and scenes. So I'm, I'm really happy with them. But yeah. How about the doors? Things. How did you get that fit, the wood finish on the doors? Like the front door? On the front doors, sorry, the front doors, the double oh, doors on oh. the front. No, so th those doors, these doors here, uh, the interior and front door, they're made out of wood and they were, sorry, oh. they were manufactured, um, they were manufactured separately. Sorry, yes, no, that's, that's. Oh, that's, so the front doors have that wood, come with that wood finish? Yeah, and so do oh. the interior doors. You could stain all of your doors, which is really, really nice. That is a huge plus. It's only the windows that are laser cut. Got it. So you can you can have that finish on you can get that finish on your doors or they come I'm sorry the front doors they yeah. come that way that's yeah. fabulous and they come with the little with the glass and the windows so no Beautiful. in here yeah awesome all right let's take one more question but we have to let Christine go yes Norma she she made all those windows she she totally created all those windows and made them available for everybody um, how long did it take to do all that brickwork let's say somebody is going to order that kit. And you got to go around the sides. You can't just front. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. There'll be more pictures on my site. So I only went a quarter of the way here. Oh, you did? Uh-huh. Oh, my poor little Hard to see. struggling. But I uh -huh. only went up to here on house. Uh-huh. So um, it didn't take that long. It was a good week. I mean, but it wasn't. A good week. It was easy though. Like, you know, it was just gluing. You didn't have to separate them into any, um, yeah, you, it, it, it went up really easily, but yeah, it's, it's, it was at least five days of several Yeah. Hours. All right. So that, that's not, look, this is, if somebody is going to take this on as a project, yeah. you know, let's not kid ourselves. This isn't, this is a, you know, you are going to be spending time, but that's part of the fabulousness of being involved in this hobby is, you know, you don't want it to end in a day. You want to take your time. You want to build. You want to take the time to build. Um, so what, what what advice would you give to someone who is kind of on the fence? Do I want to do this? Can I do this? I'm a little scared, you know, not ease my mind. Well, first, like for the bricks or just in general? Just the, the entire thing. For the entire thing? <laughs> Assembly is so easy because it all just interlocks together. Oh. Like really easy. Um, I will say though, if you are putting a kit yourself, try and like think through some of your floor plans. And if you can put up wallpaper or paint it a little bit beforehand, it's much easier than doing it like after after yeah. it's assembled. That is one that is one big thing. Um, yeah, that's kit, great advice. The kit, I will say, like it because it it all interlocked together it just i don't know it's really easy to get it in a dry fit and see how you wanted things to where you wanted things to go and because the rooms are so big in a good way like they're not oversized but they yeah. do have room to play like and i don't know it was just really easy to add wiring and things like that yeah no that's good and and just final last question um just are there any specific tools that you need to have? Any special tools? To go. Um, I definitely need like a hand miter saw. That was a big okay. thing with the rim because I just did the interior. So that was something that was um, a really, a really big thing. One thing I do find when I'm painting these windows, I I do like to use house paint because especially when things are laser cut, which these windows are, uh, you get like some soot and things like that. So um, 
I do sometimes use airbrush flow medium. And if oh. you mix that in with house paint, you keep the opaqueness of the paint, but then it's just a little bit easier to keep it from getting those like little paint bumps, which oh. when you do paint these windows, like I said, if you're painting them white or something, like it, it can take a lot of coats and yeah. you're just less likely to get the little, the little bumps on them. So what do you, what, um, so tell me what house paint is versus let's say, you know, a hobby store's acrylic. What's the difference? Is it oil-based? I guess it's, well, it's, it's latex paint. Oh, latex. I, I think, I think latex. one of the other reasons, is it? Yeah. I think one of the other reasons why I like it is because you can go into, um, like Home Depot or somewhere or one of the other stores and pick from all their colors versus right. the selection. And then I get the testers, which are $5 Canadian. Um, and then, you know, it's really easy. You only really need a tester. I think I did the entire front with one tester of the Sherwin-Williams alabaster mat, yeah. but I did use a full court to do, to prime the interior walls. I did white duck. No. Yeah. So, like so this is all, all this information about how you put this all together is available on your blog, correct? Yes. So Donald's going to post uh, your, uh, a link to your website and also, so folks can follow you if they're not already on your Instagram account. We're going to pop that in also, and we're going to repeat the, um, the special uh, promotional offer that ministers.com is offering to folks who are viewing this today. We're going to pop that into um, the chat box and we're going to wrap this wonderful session up by saying thank you christine hannah for sharing this lovely brentwood with us thank you to miniatures.com for sponsoring this live stream i'm going to say goodbye to everybody and say thank you for joining us today on this very special meet the miniaturist and don't forget to follow me on my social media channels and to check out my new estate sale that's coming up in a couple of weeks thank you again for joining welcome to the fall thank you all for joining and saying um, being with us and I'll say goodbye for now. All right. Take care. Bye everybody. Yay.